For today's double indie game review, we turn to two indie games that require you to put on your thinking caps in order to solve them. With the idle challenge of 64 and the mysterious adventure of Clem. The mystery of 64 so you awaken in a mysterious void with a weird compulsion to just keep digging down and breaking cubes to get more resources, to break more cubes to get more resources, and all the while your life is shattering around you as you neglect making videos, writing articles and books on game design, wondering how you're going to fit it all in, and it just keeps mounting and mounting, and wait, I think that may just be my life. Well, the story of 64 is like that, minus the existential crisis. This is a kind of, I guess, idle puzzle game, in a way. Despite the fact that you're seeing lots of machinery here, this is not a factorio. You're not going to be doing things like logistics-minded building. The rules are quite simple. Once you set down a drilling device, it will drill down on the surface and pop up these cubes. When you click on said cubes, you'll gain resources, and those resources can be used to build more things, to let you get more cubes and get more resources, and again, it just keeps adding and adding. Machines can be attached or connected to each other diagonally or horizontally, and they can influence the digging or how you break things up. The kind of second layer of 64 is setting up machinery that is there to basically convert one resource to another, and you'll need to do this depending upon what you need at the matter of hand. Progression in this game is about how far you are drilling down each one of your sites. The further you dig down, the resources will begin to change. As you get to new kind of resource layers, new buildings will be unlocked that kind of push you into the next tier of 64. These new buildings and machinery can change how certain cubes behave, they may change how certain resources work, and all the while you're just watching more and more numbers go up and kind of like this ASMR of idle. Now, as I said, if you're hoping for like a logistic style of being able to really like solve this game in that sense, you're not going to get that here. As you dig down deeper, the new machines and buildings you do unlock do require you to mix up your setups. And as new quality of life machines are introduced, they'll allow you to do things quicker, more efficiently, and so on. The quote unquote, I guess, challenge of 64 is every time you build a copy of something you already have, the cost goes exponentially up. So having machines that are just not working at their full capability or things that are just hanging around is going to be a detriment to you in terms of progressing when you need it. There is a story, I guess, in the bottom left as you are contacting your friend and they're just kind of wondering where are you and why are you still digging and clicking on cubes. There are other mysteries as you go further in and I like what I see here. I like the very minimalistic aesthetic and kind of like the detail of the machines. In a way this reminds me a little bit of playing the Norp Analog in that this is definitely more of a hands-on idle game. You are not going to be making any progression with the game being turned off and it is more about what you do rather than just setting things up and just waiting around for anything to happen. But I don't know if there's enough connective kind of mechanics between one layer to the next that's going to keep you invested. When you get to the Hell Cube layer, that is the green that you kind of see in my resource in the upper left, it slows down quite a bit. And you need to go several thousand uh, feet down, or whatever the uh, measurement is, before you get to the next tier. And I think the game could do a little bit better job of kind of simplifying some of the quality of life issues, of trying to click on things, trying to figure out when things need to be refilled, and so on. Now they have changed some of the basic ways of playing since 1.0, including a machine that lets you just hold down and will do the clicking for you, thus saving everybody from a repetitive stress injury. And 
it does hold my interest but like I said if you're hoping for I guess more in terms of where the idol can go where things can be it's it may be hidden deep down below but I don't know if it's going to be a fulfilling mystery enough for you just keep on clicking and keep on getting those cubes. But if you do enjoy idle style games and looking for one that is more on the focus side compared to some of the free ones that are out there, then I would give this one a try and hopefully won't destroy your free time. And now we switch over to a Clem, a point and click style adventure game. We wake up as a mysterious doll in a dilapidated house. A voice beckons us to search for various elements and qualities hidden among the estate. And we are going to do that using the power of puzzle solving and going every which way. The game itself, in a very like, economical sense, takes place entirely within the house and kind of like the neighboring yard and whatnot. As you go through each chapter, items and puzzles will change based on whatever is happening then. Certain items you pick up in one chapter may become important in a later one. The puzzle solving here is kind of all over. You'll have kind of your standard logic based puzzles, you'll have music based puzzles, and You'll also be able to pick up various magical items, which will enable you to either get new clues or solve puzzles that weren't readily accessible earlier in the game. I like the diegetic GUI here, that it all takes place within kind of the notebook you find by our title character, Clem. The story here is certainly an interesting one, and I'm not going to be showing too many like specific scenes in this part of the review because it is a very interesting story and I don't want to spoil any major beats, but it will go places you probably did not expect when you start this game. In terms of puzzle logic though, or puzzle difficulty, it can be on the harder side in spots. You're supposed to be getting clues from the notebook, and as a really great touch, any clue you find in the world gets recorded in the notebook itself so that you'll need to keep going around and there's sometimes additional notes added to them to give you a better clue as to what you need. But it can still be a little bit weird. Remember, you're going to be finding items that may or may not help you at the moment, and there were, I think, like one or two puzzles in particular that I was not a fan of. I felt like they were more annoying than they were interesting. One of them was kind of like almost like the penultimate puzzle of the entire game. And the only other like kind of quality of life issue that I had with Clem is that I wish you could move around just a tiny bit faster. You can turn on run, or should I say, quote unquote, run speed from the options at the beginning, which... I highly suggest everyone will do, but there's still a lot of back and forth and backtracking between rooms. And it's also in some cases a little bit easy to miss some of these smaller miscellaneous items and clues in certain areas. Because everything kind of all blends into the background and the aesthetic. And with that said, Clem is still a really great adventure game that did keep me interested all the way to the end. And I would like to see more of this universe and kind of what else is going on here. So if you enjoy your adventure games with a bit of murder, a bit of mystery, and a little bit of the macabre, then I highly recommend you check it out. And with that, we're done with our double review. Both games were played with press keys provided by developers. You let me play your game. For a future stream, video, and all that, be sure to reach out. And with that said, hope you enjoyed this video. That's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to do the YouTubing stuff people tell you to do. If you're interested in more of my thoughts on design, check out my books wherever they are sold. Visit our Discord and Patreon and come back for detailed discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where you some of the art and science of games.